underpants. Underpants. Hello, I'm Steve. This is Vintage Key Studios, and here's another video all about one of the great things we've got here uh, that uh, I've, I've mended over the years and, and that we use here. This is a Jennings Univox J6, uh, dating from roughly about 1953-54. It was uh, sold to me about 10 years ago, uh, and it was completely broken, and all the keys had fallen off, and none of the electronics worked. It just made a horrible uh, mains hum. And uh, I, I managed to get it all back together and working again. So I thought I'd just like to show you around it. As you can see, it's uh, it's made of wood. Um, it's got kind of like funny sort of accordion-y type keys on it. Um, and it was designed in about 1940 by the Jennings Company in Dartford, Kent, in England. And... The first models of these weren't um, particularly good, and uh, but it was it was uh, designed by a guy called Les Hills or the French Les Hills, and he uh, had a look at a clavioline, and we actually have a clavioline over here. You will see a picture of one now, which was a French design, which was sort of quite popular in the very early forties, and it was a small keyboard, monophonic uh, keyboard synthesizer. Tom Jennings saw that there was a market for this electronic stuff and uh, decided to make his own version of a clavioline. So he got um, Lay Hills to Liz Hills to um, look at uh, the clavioline and kind of take it to pieces and have a, have a good rummage around and try and make something similar but different. And he came up with the circuitry for this inside here, which is... Um, it's all very nice and, and accessible when I open it up. I'll, I'll, you'll see some photos of it later on. But the initial models uh, weren't very good and uh, they all tended to, to break very quickly. I mean, this is still fairly... I mean, it's now 60, 70 odd years old. They do tend to kind of um, need a, a hell of a lot of care to keep them working. But they're made like old accordions um, and they've got very, very sort of primitive uh, spring action keys in them all made of wood then it's got two little contacts inside when you see them inside they, they're kind of like they're, they're, they're very difficult to get straight you've got to get them straight um, otherwise they're kind of when I first had it they're all like this all sticking up and, and, but it's and, and they seem to sort of move with the temperature of the, of the room they're in and also with the seasons let's get into it and I'll play you a few of the sounds it makes it's basically an oscillator which will which is then run through a resistor ladder um which is um what what in essence the keyboard is now with this one there's resistors between each note um and so if you play a, the, the note at the the bottom if you can get it to stay on and then play a note above it it cancels it out because the resistance is being sort of cut and halved and everything the problem with this design was that they had to have um, really, really specific values for resistors between each note. And uh, after many years, these resistor values start to drift. So when I got this thing, it just sounded like all over the place. It wasn't tuned to anything. So what I had to do was I had to get a load of little, uh, I can't remember if they were, I think they were 100k trim pots and put them between each note and then tune them all in as I went up and then stick uh, some of my nail varnish on them uh, to keep them in, in, in position. But as you can hear, uh, it's pretty, pretty much in tune. It's got a wonderful scratchy sound to it, uh, as again, because you've got these uh, stupid little contacts in it and these, these metal, little metal contacts that come down. And so there's like little pins and it's just sort of like doing this on them. Um, now you have um, you've got the, the the main oscillator sound. You've also got um, all these tone controls, and you've got a, a sub octave setting. So let's have a look at the sub octave setting first, because that's quite good. So here we have. Uh, so that's that's what it sounds like just when you switch it on. Oh. And now. And as you can hear. 
the, the sort of the tuning of each note is sort of a bit wobbly but it's all part of the part of the charm really this thing has got a range of i think it's five octaves or maybe six i can't remember but it, it, it you can change it so it goes down to an octave so you've got that that's the mid-range octave and then And it, uh, it took me about seven years to get the uh, the tuning in this thing to stay where it was, because uh, as as with a lot of old equipment, a lot electronic equipment, the tuning drifts as as the as the things get hot. Uh, so yeah, so we've got the the, the, the sub octave, um, and then you can uh, add the fundamental tone over the top of it. Uh, hang on a second. These tabs are a bit of a mystery, but they are pretty much, these ones here are all tone controls. This one here, it interacts with this part over here in a minute, which I'll tell you about in a minute, the, the, the Firetron um, impulse generator circuit. And this one here um, also does something with that as well. And then you've got this vibrato section here and tab A uh, widens the vibrato, I think, and tab B does something else to it. Um, but anyway, let's, let's show you the vibrato. So we've got so we've got slow vibrato, medium vibrato, and fast vibrato. Now you probably heard that there wasn't a huge amount of difference between those three, but if you actually use them together, um, it, you can hear. So. And then if I put the A tab on, you can hear that the vibrato widens. So you can then um, use that effect quite nicely. Now, if we add the sub octave on as well and play it slightly lower, so we have the the one drawback with this and with a lot of these sort of old keyboards is that there was no gain stage after the the filter. So you you, you play it as, as normal and it's sort of a fairly okay level. As soon as you start adding the filters. really quiet there, there is supposed to be a knee lever on this which I have got but I haven't got it sorted out yet so I've just stuck a, a, a clothes peg in there at the moment to keep it working so you can hear it so you you should in theory be able to sort of sit here and move the knee lever and it will will uh, uh, increase the volume but it's a bit of a fine art trying to remember which which of these tabs does what <laughs> Over this side of the Univox, you have this uh, strange switch is here called circuits one, two, three, four. Um, and this is uh, when, it, when I first bought this thing, nothing happened when it was just all sounded the same. Um, and then I, I gradually realized after talking with a couple of people online uh, that this thing is actually um, a, a thing called a Thyrotron impulse generator. Um, what it does is it basically changes the the envelope of the or envelope of the sound of, of, of the key so it sort of shapes the note so with it on circuit one you'll just hear that it just is a continuous like an organ tone just like so it just goes along goes, 
then cuts off. With it set to circuit two, this is now a short note. So if, you, if I press do exactly the same thing, you can hear it sort of underneath, but it, it basically just the, the, the initial sound just goes to, to play it like that, you have to re-strike each, each note because otherwise you, you end up just playing the first, it's like on a Hammond organ when you've got the percussion sound. The first um, thing you do, the first time you press the key, it triggers off the percussive sound, but then you can end up doing that and you'll lose all the, the sound. So you need to re-trigger re all of the notes every time you play. So that's circuit two. Circuit three has just got a longer decay time. Which is quite nice. Put a bit more. And then circuit four is an even longer decay time. Which is quite nice. Uh, as you can hear, I've got I've got the vi vi vibratio on. At the end of this this uh, video, you'll hear um, a piece of music I did a while ago called Electric Share, um, which is um, a multi-tracked Univox J6, um, which I hope you'll enjoy. So there's there's not much else to say really, other than it uh, it's quite hard to play it. You need to, I mean, to to, to get it to all be like a very smooth um, sound. It's it's fairly hard because of the um, kind of crude mechanical side of it, with it all being just like sp springs and little contacts and stuff. And then remembering which switches you've got on. Here we go. there is the vibrato um, circuit which is used in this to trigger the uh, Thyrotron impulse generator so you get like that mandolin type sound but the great thing I, about this that I really like is the fact that uh, pretty much each time you switch it on you find a different sound and then you think I can't remember how to get it and you never get it again and possibly the most amazing thing about this is the fact that when you switch when you switch this thing on around the front or the back of the speaker it glows green <laughs>